Thank you very much, Sean. Welcome everyone for another session of RM Smart Investing uh, webinar and class. And uh, today I am gonna introduce you something different the way the markets have been. I thought, uh, why don't we talk about uh, something about the trend? And with all the, the, the tools we have at the data with the price, pricing and, and charting from, uh, from lines to dots to bars, from the high uh, open, high, low, close, uh, candlesticks. There are so many different ways of charting prices that uh, you wanna focus on one or two and find out what is the, your favorite. Obviously in, in the Western charting, they use a lot of the bars and uh, they also use the, um, the open, I low close. And my favorite charting has been for over 30 years has been candlesticks. I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm very visual. So I, I think candlesticks are a must, especially if you're doing trading a variety of markets. A derivative of a candlestick is something called Haikanashi. And uh, basically it is similar to candlesticks, but it, it gives you an added benefit if you're using a trend or basically change of the trend. So what is this Hakanashi? Basically Hakanashi in Japanese, that, that means the average pace. Sometimes it is bar, but it's average pace. And again, as I mentioned, it's a form of candlestick charting and it helps again with the market trends. And it's a cleaner, less noisy a sibling of candlestick. So I, I initially just want to show you the difference. As you can see on the left side, it's a candlestick chart. It has like green bars and has the red bars, you know, the selling and the buying. And as you can see with Hakanashi chart, it's much more cleaner in as far as looking at, uh, especially if you want to see the change of trend and or the strength of the trend. And we will uh, um, uh, talk about this more. So, so how is this different from candlestick or any regular bars? And the majority of bars, as you know, we have the, um, the open of the day, we have the high of the day, we have the low of the day, and then we have the close. It's all in the same day or the same bar. If you're using 60 minutes, if you're using weekly. So each bar represents that. Hakanashi is basically say two periods. So it kind of marries two bars. Again, if you're using daily, it marries two daily bars. And the way it approaches that, it, it's similar to candlestick, except in again, marrying the two bars. So as far as the closing goes, what it does, it looks at the open, looks at the high, it looks at the low and the close, and then it divides it by four. So basically the close of a Hakanashi is not the same as the close of any other bars, especially again, we've talked about the high, low, and then the regular bars and also candlestick. So that's a little different. And uh, basically as far as the open goes, what they look at it, they look at the open of the previous bar, they look at the close of the previous bar. So nothing from and they divide it by two. So it's the midpoint of the previous day and that becomes your open. So this is where the difference is. As far as the high and low, the high is a maximum of you know, it's two days so, or the present. So if you're doing daily or if you're doing that single bar, it's the bar zero rather than negative one. So it's the high open close or the low is the minimum of a low open close. And that's what they, they look at it. But as you can see, the difference, it creates a little bit, um, again, uh, as far as the numbers go, you, you shall see uh, it will be when we look at the chart. That's the difference. So by doing this, again, marrying two candles, that gets rid of some of the noise and it makes it a little smoother and actually more pleasing to uh, uh, visually, I should say. So. One of the things you have to understand when we talk about 
in charting, especially when you talk about like candlesticks and uh, other tools of the charting, you have to differentiate between the, the leading indicators and the, the setup indicators. So when we look at, for instance, this Hakanashi, in Hakanashi candlestick charting, it is a, a setup indicator. What that means is it helps you with your entries and, and your exits and reversal. So by doing so, it's not a leading indicator. It doesn't tell you what's gonna happen in the future. Basically it tells you, you know, we got confirmation. This is a good time. If, if the market is trending and it's strong, let's jump on the bandwagon and go uh, with the trend. And it, it is the good thing about, again, I love the candlesticks, the good thing about this Akinashi is you can use it in a variety of markets and a variety of time frames. But because of, again, the marrying of the two bars, the previous two bars, it becomes a little slower as far as the reaction goes. So as far as if you're doing a fast pace, let's say you're doing the futures market, the day trading, it, it is better to use candlesticks regular rather than hakinashi. And this is the reason perhaps the best usage would be in a longer term or such as on a daily time frame. So you could use 240 minutes, but as far as a very short term, it, it, again, because of that lagging, uh, it, it's not as useful as a regular bar. So it is, but it's good for swing trading, for instance, which is more of intermediate in the investing in a sense. Um, I just want to show you a visual. This is a Canadian Japanese yen. It's just, a, again, the underlying market is not important. You can see the smoothness. This is a regular candlesticks, right? So you have the green and red and, you know, the bars move. And this is how the Hakenashi looks. So as you can see, it's very orderly. It, it takes the, a lot of noise away. And basically it helps you, especially in turning points or when there's a strong trend or the trending market, it helps you to stay in the market rather than having like whipsaws like this. And then you want to decide, do I, do I get out of my position for instance here? Do I stay with it? And as you know, like the dojis or spinning tops or you know, the, 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 look at the dragonflies and there are more of an indecision. So this takes care of that. What I found out, it is good to have that, but there are sometimes, again, the false, um, actually, uh, as far as false messages when the, uh, the, the trend uh, changes or reversals, I, I rather for entry and exit combine Hakenashi with MACD. And by combining that, your profitability goes much higher. Your entry and exits are, are more efficient. So uh, there's also, you could use RSI. RSI, I don't use it as much as MACD. Again, with MACD, it gives me a better chance of looking at trend. MACD is a really a trend setter in a sense of understanding the trend. So I prefer to use MACD rather than the RSI or stochastics. Stochastics is a momentum trader. It's very good to keep you in the position, but also when you get out, uh, and again, if you use it slow and fast. But MACD is, I think, the best tool combining the Kakanashi. So let's look at, this is as of today's close. So I'm gonna work on Spider, which is S&P 500 ETF. This is September 29th, 2021, today's closing. So what I'm looking at is basically a regular candlestick chart. Uh, we have our moving averages, as you can see the 50 day 200, and then I have a, I use exponential um, 20 day moving average. And that's visually, you can look at it that, look at this. And I have my MACD. Basically, you can see we had the crossover histogram. You can see that could have been a sell signal. Um, on the other hand, I use the RSI mainly when there is like overbought or the oversold, uh, rather than looking just for the trend. So that's what I emphasize, Mac feet. So this is basically the regular candlestick.
And now let's compare that to, for instance, this is our Hakenashi. And with Hakenashi, there's a few things you can, again, notice that it is much cleaner in, again, especially on the reversals and the continuation. So you stay in your trend or your position much longer than if you were using, for instance, regular candlesticks. One of the point of interest that I mentioned is that the difference, look at what is the closing price on regular candlestick, which is the real price, by the way, because it's today's, right? And you look at the moving averages, for instance. Again, they grow every day's close. And then you, if you look at the 200 and 20 and 50. So for instance, you're at 442.29 and the closing for today was 434.14. And that's what it creates a little confusion that, that in Hakenashi is actually 435.12 and 442.21, about eight cents difference. So that's what you have to be aware of. So what do you wanna do? Of course, you wanna have regular charting. This is, it allows you to, again, be on, uh, staying in your position longer. So it's more of a visual, I'm not sticking just with the prices or irregular prices, but it lets you know, wait a minute, if I go back here, uh, this looks like, okay, there's a little indecision here. What do I do? Is there a pause? Also, you can see there was a gap. And this was, uh, you know, again, we had a gap and uh, when we, we, it was a crossing over uh, that, that's uh, 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 20 day moving average crossed the 50 day moving average is negative. But when we go to Akinashi, you can see there's a nice continuation. So this tells us that, wait a minute, this trend could continue. And the way we can look at this is the way you get in is as soon as the, the bar changes, it could be a hollow, for instance, in some uh, platforms, it's a green. So this hollow or green, so you get in on the, when the changes from the, the red color or um, a filled color, we call. So this is filled or it was red to hollow and you stay with your trend. Here there's a little pause, you watch it, but the second candle continues. So what we do, if you were using this, we are above the 20 uh, the exponential moving average, the color changed or the, the filled changed to hollow. We can see that the histogram and also the, the crossover and MACD has confirmed that. So this would have been a good place to come in. And we will continue going till we actually see indecision here. And now the hollow changes to fill, or again, green, some places it changes to red. And what happens is also you see the crossover in MACD. And what it tells you, you follow and you continue. Now, as you can see, there's a, a doji and what we can see is there's indecision, but we have broken below the 20 uh, exponential EMA and we've continued and we broke under the 50. So there is no change of trend. So if you're shorting, you will continue. You perhaps could have taken a little profit here, but you will continue with this. And uh, that's what makes it again, cleaner. And basically here, what happened was you can see again in decision, and then we had this big bar. So basically what happened here, you have this big bar and you say, wait a minute, we changed, we had indecision, it's a reversal, we have a hollow or a big green bar. Oh, this is a good time to get in, but MACD does not confirm that. And that's the reason I like to use the MACD because the times like this, you would have gotten into the position more of, again, the swing trading. And again, it, you would have been stuffed out, stuffed out here. So, so far, the MACD is telling us that we're still on a sell side of the things. And again, um, one of the things you also notice, there is no gap. Because we are combining the previous two bars, 
you don't have gaps. So if you're trying to play gaps, then that's a different story. You can use, again, regular candlesticks. But for the trending staying in a position for, again, I mentioned for swing trading, this might be a, a, a better suggestion. So one of the things you will also notice, you can combine of the classic technical analysis, whether you look at the double top, whether you look at the wedges, or you, you're, you're looking at, uh, for instance, flags. And it, it, basically in this situation, what I can see just visually, I can see this looks like a head and shoulder. And, and you know, lately in the last few years, because of the, all the program training on things, head and shoulder is not as applicable as I remember like 30 years ago. It was a lot more cleaner. Uh, but nowadays, you know, it doesn't work as well, but it's a food for thought. You can see the neckline is right around where we are at 435. So let's pay attention to this because that could also give us a better hint whether this is a time to, uh, you know, if we break down, whether we are gonna go at least another, let's say $15 lower, go to 420, or this is gonna reverse and just gonna, continue and go up. So, but right now the trend is down. And again, as I said, we have this classic head and shoulder here. One of the things I mentioned again, it's just so many charting ways you can do that for the prices. You know, I mentioned to this candlesticks, there's open, high and low and close. And I mean, dash line, dots, area, histogram, echo volume. I used to use echo volume a lot, but uh, you know, a lot of uh, platforms don't even offer it, but this is from Stock Charts, by the way, and StockCharts.com, and I'm using their charts to share with you because it's free. They have so much uh, information. There's so many wonderful uh, technical tools, so that's what I'm using. And this is one way, you know, if you want to use Hakanashi, there's Renko. I don't have it yet. Kagi, and you know, you can use those. But here, how you can use Hakanashi updated. And it, it shows moves from candlestick to Hakanashi, for instance, for you. So let's bring that to I mentioned about classic, for instance. Here we are. We can we can see there's a lot of indecision. There's a big bar break out of this channel, or you know, it, it would be the downtrend channel. We can use Fibonacci, for instance, and that gives us the confirmation. And if we combine it with the MACD, that's even better. So what I wanted to do now, we go to our thinkorswim platform, and I want to put three different charts exactly as far as uh, the old SPY, one year SPY tool, and let's compare them. So the first one is we've used this, this the candlesticks again. It's, the, the, it's John Carter's uh, trend setting that he, he, he uses a TTM. And Basically, it's very similar to Hakanashi. He uses blue color and, and the red. And you can see where we are. It does comprise as a, as a, you see the gaps here. So this is one way. And, you know, as you can see, there's a squeeze and the wave A and wave C. Then we move it. This is, uh, let me move to the left, uh, to the right side. This is a regular candlestick. We have uh, MACD uh, crossovers here. So this is a regular candlestick. You can see there's a gap. And, and then we have Hakanashi. So with Hakanashi, again, visually, when you look at it, as I said, it's more friendly. Again, my apologies, the charts are small. So if you can expand it, uh, it's much uh, pleasing to visually. But again, you look at this, you can say, well, there's a trend, there's a trend. Uh, one of the things about the trends is what you want to look for is you want to have your trends. We go back and go here or even here. You can see when there are no tails, no wicks, that's strong. So when you're going up, again, you're marrying those two bars. The less wicks and tails they are, the better it is for your trend. When you get here, you get a lot of tails. That's indecision up and down. And when we are going down, obviously you want to have, again, this is a rejection of the seller. So you, when you're going down, you don't want to have a lot of tails. You rather have solid bars 
And that tells you the strength of it. When you don't have it, you still have the trend. We still have this trend, but it's not as strong as let's say when there's no tails here. So this is nice. And uh, basically the, the less of a wick, the less of the tails, the stronger your trend. So let's focus on that as well. So at the end, again, I mentioned it's gonna be sweet and uh, short in a sense. Um, I wanna share you my seven keys for how I use Hakanashi. So basically you can um, follow it if you like. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, I use Hakanashi for entering and exiting with the reversals. So it is not, again, a leading indicator. It's just for your setups to have more conviction to get in. As I mentioned, it's not supposed to be a five minute, but you could use it, but it's not as reliable as uh, again, in a shorter term. Um, for uptrend, you look for hollow or green candles. And if you wanna have the strong uptrend, you wanna have your hollow or green candles with really no lower shadow. So it's all positive. Again, the previous day at the open and close of last day, that means we're ahead of that. So we are moving up. On the reversal, you want to look at, again, the dojis and spinning tops, or you know, you want to look at uh, things that with the, um, you know, surrounded by upper and lower shadows or, or wicks or tails. So you look for that to get, um, be prepared that maybe it's a good time if initiating, getting ready for initiation or, if you have positions, maybe lighten up on those. And of course, that's where I mentioned we use MACD to get the confirmation. The downtrend is the opposite of this. It's not hollow, it's filled, or it's red candles, depending on your platform that you're using. And if it's a strong downtrend, then you, you look for, again, with no shadows on top. So you wanna have, you know, going down and, uh, with the no higher shadows. So basically um, it's, it's, that shows you the strength. And uh, so, as I mentioned, this is more appropriate for swing trading than the short-term day trading and the marriage of the two period uh, information, the two bars basically. So it's kind of slow to develop. And um, number six, as you notice, there are no press gaps because we are constantly uh, marrying the two uh, or combining the two bars. The last but not least, as I mentioned, is used for definitely, I use MACD for confirmation to give me less noise and less, uh, again, um, a more successful trade as far as my, um, you know, uh, my win, win rate. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, as I mentioned, it's a good combination. So with that in mind, I hope that was informative. Um, uh, I hope uh, it was something that you can put into use. Again, it's not very complicated, it's, uh, but it is a useful tool. Like any other things, you can use your own, again, strategies and combine it with this and uh, hopefully um, it will be beneficial and profitable. All right, with that in mind, you can stop the recording and uh, open up for the Q&A.